The Battle of Vienna of 1683 took place after the imperial city had been besieged for two months by the Ottoman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire, led by the Habsburg Monarchy, and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, led by King John III Sobieski, fought the Ottomans and their vassal and tributary states. What happened? What were the factors that led to the battle? Stick till the end of the video to find out. Hello, and welcome to History Fun Facts, where we present some of the most amazing facts you might not have heard. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you won't miss future updates. Without further ado, let's get straight into this. Who were the opposing military forces? The Ottoman Empire and its vassal states were opposed by military forces led by Grand Vizier Mirzafanlu Kara Mustafa Pasha. The Ottoman army numbered between 90,000 and 300,000 men. The siege began on July 14, 1683. Ottoman forces included, among other things, 60 orders of Janissaries and a 70,000-man observation army that patrolled the countryside. The decisive battle occurred on September 12th following the arrival of the United Relief Army. Historians believe the battle was a watershed moment in the Ottoman Habsburg Wars, a 300-year conflict between the Holy Roman and Ottoman Empires. The Austrian Habsburgs gradually recovered and dominated southern Hungary and Transylvania, which had been largely cleared of Ottoman forces over the next 16 years. The battle is remembered for the largest known cavalry charge in history. Because of its interconnected control over Danubian southern Europe and overland trade routes, capturing Vienna had long been a strategic goal of the Ottoman Empire. During the years preceding the Second Siege, the Ottoman Empire undertook extensive logistical preparations, including the repair and establishment of roads and bridges leading into the Holy Roman Empire and its logistical centers, as well as the forwarding of ammunition, cannon, and other resources from all over the empire to these centers and into the Balkans where the plague had been raging since 1679. In 1681 and 1682, clashes between Emir Thokli's forces and the Holy Roman Empire intensified. The incursions of Habsburg forces into central Hungary provided Grand Vizier Kara Mustafa Pasha with a crucial argument convincing Sultan Mehmed IV and his divan to allow the movement of the Ottoman army. Mehmet IV gave Mustafa Pasha permission to raid Geyer and Kamaran castles in northwestern Hungary and besiege them. On January 21, 1682, the Ottoman army was mobilized and the war was declared on August 6, 1682. What happened during the siege? On July 14, the main Ottoman army finally laid siege to Vienna. Kara Mustafa sent the traditional demand for the city's surrender to the Ottoman Empire on the same day. With 370 cannons, Ernst Rudiger Graf von Starhemberg, leader of the remaining 15,000 troops and 8,700 volunteers, refused to surrender. Only a few days before he had learned of the mass slaughter in Perchtoldsdorf, a town south of Vienna where citizens had handed over the keys to the city after being given a similar choice but were still killed. On July 17th, the siege operations began. Compared to the defenders' 370 cannons, the Ottomans had 130 field guns and 19 medium caliber cannons. Mining tunnels were dug beneath the massive city walls, filled with enough black powder to blow up the walls. According to Andrew Wheatcroft, the outer palisade was around 150 years old and mostly rotten, so the defenders set to work, knocking very large tree trunks into the ground to surround the walls. This seriously hampered the Ottoman strategy, adding nearly three weeks to the time it would take to get past the old palisade. This, along with the delay in advancing their army after declaring war, allowed a relief force to arrive in September. Historians speculate that Kara Mustafa wanted to take the city intact with its riches and declined an all-out attack, not wanting to start the plundering that would accompany an assault and was viewed as a conquering soldier's right. The Ottoman siege cut off almost all food supplies to Vienna. Fatigue became so common that von Startenberg ordered the execution of any soldier found sleeping on duty. The forces defending Vienna were on their last legs when imperial forces led by Charles V, Duke of Lorraine, defeated Thokoli at Bisenberg, five kilometers northwest of Vienna in August. How and when did the battle start? The battle began before all units had been fully deployed. The Ottomans launched an attack at 4 a.m. on September 12th, attempting to disrupt the deployment of the Holy League troops. The Germans were the first to respond. After heavy fighting and multiple Ottoman counterattacks, Charles of Lorraine advanced with the Imperial Army on the left and other Imperial forces in the center 
taking several key positions, including the fortified villages of Nussdorf and Heiligenstadt. By noon, the Imperial Army had severely mauled the Ottomans and was on the verge of a breakthrough. Despite being shattered, the Ottoman army didn't fall at that moment. Mustafa Pasha launched counterattacks with most of his force, but withheld some of the elite Janissary and Sipahai units for a simultaneous assault on the city. The Ottoman commanders planned to capture Vienna before Sobieski arrived, but time ran out. Their sappers had planned a massive detonation beneath the Lobelbastier to breach the walls. Ten mines were set to explode, but the defenders discovered them and disarmed them. The Polish cavalry is said to have slowly emerged from the forest to the cheers of the onlookers, who had been waiting for them. The Hussars first went into action at 4 p.m., obliterating the Ottoman lines and approaching the Turkenshans, which was now threatened on three sides. The Ottoman vizier then decided to leave this position and return to his headquarters in the main camp further south. However, many Ottomans had already left the battlefield. The Allies were now prepared for the final blow. Around 6 p.m., the Polish king ordered the cavalry attack in four groups, three Polish and one Holy Roman Empire. 18,000 horsemen charged down the hills, the largest cavalry charge in history. Sobieski led a charge of 300 Polish heavy lancers, known as winged hussars. The Muslim Lipka Tatars fought on the Polish side and wore a sprig of straw on their helmets to distinguish themselves from the Tatars fighting on the Ottoman side. The charge easily broke the Ottoman lines who were exhausted and demoralized and began to flee the battlefield. According to contemporary Ottoman historian Siladar Findikili Mehmed Agha, 1658-1723, the battle was a massive defeat and failure for the Ottoman Empire, the most disastrous since the establishment of the Ottoman statehood in 1299. During the siege, the Ottomans lost at least 20,000 men, while their losses during the battle with Sobieski's forces were around 8,000 to 15,000 dead, and 5,000 to 10,000 captured. The Allied relief force under Sobieski's command suffered far fewer casualties, with approximately 3,500 dead and wounded, including 1,300 Poles. Tucker's figure is slightly higher at 4,500. During the siege, the 10,000-strong Viennese garrison and civilian populace lost roughly half their initial number due to various causes. Despite the Catholic Allies' victory, tensions remained among the various commanders and armies. Sobieski, for example, demanded that the Polish troops be given first dibs on the spoils of the Ottoman camp. German and Austrian troops received a smaller share of the loot. Furthermore, the Protestant Saxons who had arrived to relieve the city were reportedly verbally abused by the Catholic populace of the Viennese countryside. The Saxons left the battle immediately, refusing to share the spoils and refusing to continue the pursuit. After the Battle of Parkeny, Sobieski went on to liberate Grau in northwestern Hungary, but dysentery forced him to abandon the pursuit of the Ottomans. In 1686, Charles V conquered Belgrade and most of Syria. And in 1687, he established Habsburg control over southern Hungary and most of Transylvania. The victory of Vienna laid the groundwork for the subsequent reconquest of Hungary, Louis of Baden, Maximilian Emmanuel of Bavaria, and Prince Eugene of Savoy. The Ottomans fought for another 16 years losing control of Hungary and Transylvania before finally surrendering. In 1699, the Holy Roman Empire and the Ottoman Empire signed the Treaty of Karlowitz. The battle effectively ended Ottoman imperial expansion into Europe. The actions of Louis XIV of France exacerbated French-German enmity. The War of the Reunions broke out in the western part of the weakened Holy Roman Empire the following month. This battle was one of the greatest victories of the Roman Empire and a great loss to the Ottomans, who were a powerful force at their time. The victory was celebrated long after the battle and will always be remembered as one of history's bloodiest wars. What do you think about the video? Let us know in the comments section. And that's all for today. If you found this video helpful, please give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. And that's all for this one. Thanks for watching.